According to the United Nations, 8 million light weapons circulate in West Africa. Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau and Guinea-Conakry have, in different proportions, gone through conflicts or have been close to conflict zones. We can notice an important circulation of light weapons in these countries, especially at the borders. Those weapons held by the populations quite often come from local blacksmiths rebel movements and national armies. It is in this context that the Center for International Studies and Cooperation and Oxfam Great Britain set a sub-regional program on light weapons and small arms. This pilot program financed by the CIDA, the Canadian International Development Agency, aims at improving the security of the persons and the communities and providing their populations with better development opportunities. The choice of those four countries had been motivated by the issue of the circulation of arms and also by the fact that this is an area where there are countries like Senegal which has problems in some parts of its territory, especially in Casamance, and Guinea-Bissau which has gone through a strong period of instability. We are working in many countries to develop social and economic projects either in the sector of education or health, but it becomes very difficult to achieve sustainable outcomes when there is no security. That's why I think this project is very important because it covers the issues we face on the field on a daily basis. In the village of Kumbia, located in Guinea-Conakry, for example, the sensitization campaigns carried out by the monitors of the program led to a voluntary surrender of weapons by the populations. Also, those weapons were publicly destroyed, like here in Koina, in Gambia. The issue of light weapons and micro disarmament is the concern of the sovereignty of the state. But uh, for the very first time, the civil society has taken the initiative to study program of sensitization and collection of destruction of weapons. And of course, we're working on, with the authorities involved in the program, more precisely the National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons. The sub-regional program on light weapons and small arms thus allows the targeted populations to establish a link between security and development. In exchange for the voluntary surrender weapons, the sub-regional program on small arms and light weapons supports rural communities through the financing of micro-projects. Today is a day of satisfaction for the whole village, above all for us women, who after farming have to pound millet or maize during about two hours. Now with the meal, we save our time and energy. Besides, as soon as a conflict breaks out, men leave us with the children. So women have to do what they can to sensitize men to lay down the arms. Our first objective was to sensitize the men. But the fact of going towards them together also built a trusting environment among us, the women. We are aware that all the arms have not been returned, which must be done to carry out well other development activities. The program will end in September 2007. However, the two years of the implementation of the pilot phase proved insufficient face to the work that remains to be done. It is true that the project has positively and significantly changed the life of people here and I will pay tribute to it. But we should not overlook the fact that the armed conflict concerned the whole Casamance and not only one village. So we wish that the program is extended to other villages so that they too can do like us, that is, voluntarily handing out the arms they have.
This issue is extremely important. It is really indispensable to further actions in the different countries so as to increase security. Currently, what we notice is that even if in terms of collection and destructions of arms, the results are relatively modest, the most important thing is the education and sensitization of communities themselves as regards the importance of security to reach some stability, reduce their vulnerability in their environment and achieve a sustainable development in their countries. This program was at the pilot phase. Now we think that we have to evolve to a consolidation phase, which requires that we put forward the assets and positive results, the lessons kept from that two-year pilot phase, in order to mobilize more resources. Also, we are encouraged by the fact that ECOWAS, which is a member of the program's management committee, Consider that this is a program that could serve as an example for all of the sub-region. The experience of the pilot phase of the program, thanks to a well-defined participative approach, succeeded in demonstrating that it is possible to find a solution to the illegal circulation of small arms and light weapons. The time has come to move to another step, and that is the dearest wish of the populations of the sub-region.